all roads lead back to you. Howard was right. Where to start with this? The Better Call Saul Season 6 mid-season finale. Holy shit. Before I talk about that, let's talk about this episode as a whole and then the build-up we've had bringing it to this point. I gotta say the mid-season finale has actually improved the prior six episodes because as you know I was concerned at the pace of them. I thought maybe they were building up a little bit too slow but it has proved to be the perfect way to build it all up because now looking back on it everything has moved along so delicately to this point and it's not like this final episode actually rushed anything. It didn't actually excel the pacing that much. It was just everything coming to its conclusion. So it all worked perfectly. The delicacy of Jimmy and Kim's plan, along with the delicacy of Lalo's plan, has just built up to this, well not final episode, but you know, final episode in the first half of the season. And this is where the two worlds have collided. And from this point, there is no turning back. Things are now, it's done. It's set in stone. There is no turning back now. Now, from here onwards, it seems like there can only be chaos the episode as a whole today was paced brilliantly to make it feel longer than it was and it was just great directing great writing and there was very funny moments in here as well i, I think this was the funniest episode so far but then it was also one of the most tense not as tense i'd say as nacho's episode but it was pretty damn tense especially in that ending you could feel something was coming and i'll be honest this whole time even though i've been curious about jimmy and kim's plan and how that it was all gonna unfold I have been hesitant to support them because I like Howard and he's been going through stuff. We've seen him at therapy. We've seen his troubles with his wife. There's no reason. There's no sufficient reason as Howard even says in this episode to really go after him and do what they did to him. It's like extreme level of just, it's horrible what they did. It started off as a joke, almost a prank, like Howard said, and then it became cruel, taking down a man who was already near the very bottom. Like I said, the failing marriage, he's going to therapy, he's still holding the guilt of what happened to Chuck. Now we're at a point where it's hard to see past what they've done. Jimmy and Kim have done something unforgivable here. And now this is the difference, I guess, between the two in terms of their outcomes, because we know that Jimmy, this will not stop him. He will still become Saul Goodman in his entirety. He will still become this sleazy lawyer that doesn't even take a second glance at murder, not really. So it's really a question of how Kim's gonna take this. Is this just gonna be too much for her? Is it gonna overwhelm her? Is it gonna cause her to drop out? This has gotta be the point where Jimmy turns cynical. It just has to be, this has to be a turning point where he just decides to, to not give a shit, I'm wondering. And then I feel like it's gonna be too much for Kim. Like, she's not going to be able to hide from this. She's not going to be able to live the same. But of course, saying that, with Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad, you only ever see him working. He's either at his office, or he's with Walt, or he's with Jesse, or he's with Mike. He's always working as Saul Goodman. So we don't know what he's like at home. Does he get home and he's just miserable? You know, is, is, he, is he always Saul Goodman in Breaking Bad, or is he actually Jimmy at home? You know, does he get home and he is Jimmy McGill? Or does he just embrace the entire Saul Goodman persona? That's the thing. We never see that, that other side of him outside of work. Whereas this show is majority about him not working, in a sense. It's about who he is and how he's developed. Now, back to Lalo. He's been working very, very cleverly and very patiently. And, of course, it was the cockroach. That was the thing that made him think Saul Goodman. And that's the thing that brought him to the apartment. You know, all the roads, little things, you know, the, these characters that have had interactions with Jimmy. It's, it's what's pulled them in and brought them back to this specific spot at this specific time. And I think it was episode five when Howard and Jimmy had the boxing match and Howard said, all roads lead back to you. It was right then, it's right now. It's always Jimmy. It led Howard there, it led Lalo there, and it was Jimmy and Kim that brought them there. And I think the same applies, it was... Uh season two or season three i think chuck said to jimmy along the lines of you hurt everyone around you you can't help it it's just the way you are and that's exactly true jimmy isn't trying to kill these people you know he's not trying to get people killed but he's scheming and he's not realizing what he's doing how how dangerous it is the things it's causing i mean no one could predict what would happen but it's because of him and kim as well she's really the one that actually motivated 
Jimmy to do this and get the ball rolling. She dropped everything that day to make sure the plan went through. And it was all about timing because if Kim carries on, goes to her job thing, then Howard isn't ruined that day and he doesn't show up the same day that Lalo does. It's, it's all fine margins. It took me a while to really understand why Breaking Bad was called Breaking Bad. I didn't really think about it, but Better Call Saul is also the story of those who broke bad. You know, in Breaking Bad, it's Walt and it's Jesse. They're, and even Skylar, you know, they're, they're the sort of the, the characters that are breaking bad there. They're becoming corrupt. And it's the same thing here. Jimmy has become corrupt. Kim has become corrupt. Mike has. Gus has become more corrupt. Nacho, you know, they're, they're all they're all breaking bad in this. In it, it's, it's so clearly, you know, not, not a separate entity anymore, this show. Whilst it did used to feel like that in the early seasons, like maybe seasons one to three, it just didn't feel like breaking bad. Now it does. These characters have now reached a stage where they can't turn back. They have gone too far. The damage is done. And now they are stuck in this world where it's just chaos and criminals and murder and now they're trapped all we now know is that jimmy learns to live with it because in breaking bad he recommends murder to walt you know in, in terms of sending jesse on a trip to belize in terms of poisoning brock he's okay with it at least in that work environment it's like i said before we're not sure what he's really like outside of work is he jimmy outside of work or is he just full-on saul is all of saul goodman a front or is it actually who Jimmy is, who he's meant to be? Because even so, Howard getting killed, the look of horror on his face, along with Kim's, you can see it's just, how are they actually going to recover from that? Especially Jimmy. How is he going to recover from that and become who he becomes? And you've got to feel there's going to be some beef there at some point as well, because Kim knew that Lalo was still alive and she didn't tell Jimmy. That's going to piss Jimmy off. That is really going to make him mad, I feel like. There's, there's going to be some dispute there because... Maybe Jimmy would have been more, I don't know, walking on eggshells or something. I'm not sure. Kim was actually quite selfish there and in terms of not warning Jimmy about that because maybe he would have convinced her, all right, we need to get the fuck out of here and not live here anymore in case Lalo comes looking. Like I said, fine, fine margins. As for Kim, I mean, God knows what will happen for her. And the next episode is uh, that's early in July promises to be damn good because everything is set up for chaos now. There is build up. There was build up and that is done. And now it's time for the end game. We are definitely in the end game now. This show I've always, I've thought it for a while now, is, is superior to Breaking Bad. I think I've felt that way maybe even since season three and definitely season four. The fact that it's always felt so dramatic without the themes of murder, but just the character drama. You know, early episodes of Breaking Bad, you've got murder, you've got people, you know, getting melted with acid. Um, here, it's, it's just a character drama. Jimmy and his brother. You do get, obviously, the other side of things with Tuco, Nacho, Mike, and then Gus eventually comes in, but that's what's so impressive about this show. It was the fact that things could be so shocking and feel so dramatic, but if you were to describe it to someone, it doesn't sound that dramatic. Like, if you were to describe the court case where Jimmy altered the numbers on the Sandpiper paperwork to screw over Chuck, it doesn't sound that crazy, you know, on paper. But on screen, it was such an incredible, dramatic crazy moment and that's the beauty of the show it makes little things seem like really really big things because they are so big to these characters so then when we get to this point where you've got these characters that we've only ever seen on like a legal side of things like howard and jimmy and kim then when you're throwing in murder to that scenario it feels even more dramatic like it almost feels more dramatic than nacho's death because we knew he was in that world but for howard to just get shot by a salamanca it's it's crazy it still isn't really sunking it is it's madness and that is the thing you know it's just these ordinary characters are now getting pulled into this absolutely crazy world it's just turned dark murder and evil are just engulfing all characters the evolution of the show is incredible the evolution of jimmy and all characters is incredible and i really can't wait for the final six episodes it's going to be a painful seven weeks of waiting but i can't wait I can't wait. It's going to be so worth it. I feel like we are really set up so well for these final six episodes. I can't even predict what's going to happen. I don't want to know anything. I don't want to know anything about these final six episodes. I just want to watch it each week and just uh, have my mind blown. But yeah, I mean, there's some stuff I didn't talk about. The whole episode as a whole was really, really good, really well directed. And, you know, Lalo was great. It was 
great to see him back, even though it's kind of fucked up what he did. You know, Howard getting shot is just really, really horrible. I feel so bad for Howard. He did not deserve that, but that's the way it goes in this world. It's uh, it's dangerous. I would give episode seven, the mid-season finale of season six of Medical Saw, a 10 out of 10. Of course, a 10 out of 10. And yeah, seven weeks. Seven weeks, we'll be back with an episode eight review, but you know, I might do some videos in between. Yeah, of course, you know, I'll be back with uh, more videos regularly. But for the time being, that is Better Call Saul. If you've seen it, let me know what you think about it, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.